Good evening. Thank you for tuning in for another Wednesday night edition of Bible Study. I'm so blessed that you have allowed us to enter into your home uh, via your cell phone, laptop, computer, tablet, uh, however you're doing it. And I'm just happy that you are connected uh, with the body of Christ and we can come together and still um, speak and teach and read God's word together. So do me a favor and share this with someone. Uh, that would be a tremendous help and a tremendous blessing. And let's pray. Jesus, I thank you that you saw fit who would be here tonight. You've ordered every single one of our steps. And so, Father, I pray that you would um, speak to us. Our coming is not by coincidence. Our gathering is not by coincidence. But we are here together because you have a purpose. You knew who would be here at this moment, at this time. You ordained it for them to hear something that would lead them into a stronger walk with you. So blow our minds, God. We expected you to do great things, but you're able to do immeasurably more than we can ask, think, or imagine. So blow our minds tonight. We expect it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We've been dealing with uh, spiritual warfare, and then we started uh, in an area inside spiritual warfare that I thought was so important for you and I as believers. I said if we wanted to um, understand or grow in the art of spiritual warfare, we need to understand biblical authority. We need to understand our authority that God has given us. And so we dealt with um, examples, biblical examples that God has given us to show uh, his authority, his principles of authority. And so we listed those out last time we were together. We said examples of authority uh, in the earth are parent and child, husband and wife, Jesus and the church, government and citizens. So we see those four, at least in scripture. And then we dealt with principles, principles of authority and spiritual warfare. We gave you four of them last time. Look at it in the archives if you missed it. Uh, watch that one first, then watch that one, this one because I give them to you in steps. And uh, we're so happy that we can archive these messages on our website, on our social media pages so you can see them um, in proper order so you can grow. And so I'm so blessed for that. And so last time we were together, we gave you four principles of authority. And uh, I won't go into all of those, but I will give you the definition uh, of authority that I'm speaking of written by yours truly. When we're talking about the concept of spiritual authority, specifically used in the area of spiritual warfare, I'm talking about the delegated right given to us by God to exert his dominance and his control when necessary to carry out his plan and will on earth. So that's the our definition we're operating under. We give you principles and scriptures that help prove that definition and why the Spirit of God, I believe, led me to it, to word it that way. But let's go a little deeper tonight into, into the area of authority. And again, we said last week in our introduction, um, if we're going to engage in spiritual warfare as believers, it's important for us to know and understand the concept of authority. And when we hear authority, uh, many Christians or believers childishly assume that that gives them the right to bind and loose whenever they want. And they use that passage in Matthew 16, 19 uh, out of context, and they could do uh, whatever they want. But unless we invoke the help of the Holy Spirit um, to help us understand the biblical concept of authority, um, we can get off into some weird things and, and we can get into some dangerous places. But if we are operating within the boundaries of our assignment and within the boundaries of authority that God uh, has given us uh, on this planet, uh, you and I can see great victory because we said this was the key behind Jesus having so much success on earth. He understood the boundaries of his authority and the boundaries of his assignment. He knew what he was supposed to do versus what the Holy Spirit was supposed to do. Uh, he knew uh, what he was supposed to accomplish here on this planet versus what Holy Spirit was supposed to accomplish after Jesus was gone. And so he had so much success, a 100% success rate. Everything he did worked because he knew his authority, he knew his assignment, he knew the boundaries of his authority, and so he is the ultimate model among many great models of scripture can give us, but he's the ultimate model of how to walk 
in uh, biblical authority. But let's go into more principles. Uh, let's get into another authority principle tonight. All right. Authority, watch this, is established by God. Authority is established by God. Romans 13. And this is a review passage of scripture because we read it once when we gave an example on authority, when we talked about government and citizens. But Romans 13 and 1, we're after one thing here. Let everyone be subject to the governing authority. Watch this, for there's no authority except that which God has established. So all authority is established by God. God established the authority of police officers and citizens. He established the authority of, of, of governors and senators. He established the authority of presidents. He established the authority of kings. He established all of these authorities, all right? And he didn't make it where every nation is run the same. He knows there are different types of authorities for different people. Uh, we vote our authorities into power here. The other places where authorities uh, come to power, democracy is not um, in every country. Some places authorities come to power based on the bloodline. And so I'm not here to talk about which one is right or wrong or what God intended. That's a long conversation for another day. But we ultimately know that every authority is established by God. Every authority is established by God. That's number two, one. Number two, let's get into these principles of authority. A believer's authority is based in their relationship to God. A believer's authority is based in their relationship to God. Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. Starting at verse uh, number 11. God did extraordinary miracles through Paul so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick and their illnesses were cured and the evil spirits left them. Verse 13. Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon possessed. They would say, watch this, in the name of the Jesus whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. So they were trying to use an inauthentic authority. They were trying to use uh, the authority of God without being in relationship with God. They said, in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. We don't know this Jesus. We don't even know everything about him, but we just know the one that Paul preaches about. Maybe if we can just use the name, boom, uh, we will be able to cast this devil out. And according to this, it didn't go according to plan. Uh, one day, verse 14, seven sons of Sceva, Jewish chief priests, those are the people doing this. One day the evil spirit answered them, Jesus, I know, Paul, I know, but who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. Okay, this is for those people who just think it's just the magic words of in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, not understanding that there's no power, there's no authority in saying that line. The authority is in knowing what that means. The authority is in walking in, in proximity and closeness to Jesus, where you know we say, when you say in the name of Jesus, you're talking about the character, the nature of Jesus. His name carries everything with that. So when we're saying in the name of Jesus, we're saying we're declaring the God of gods, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and everything that comes with, with him, all the aspects of his nature, all the aspects of his character, everything he is, his truth, uh, everything about him, okay, all of this, his righteousness, his holiness, his omnipotence, his omniscience, all that is in the, in the name of Jesus, I am bringing the God of gods to the forefront if I don't understand that, and I just think it's a magic word in the name of Jesus, 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 that's not how that works. And so likewise, they, this was, they were, uh, to, in, a, in a way, this is what they were doing. In the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches of. Let me see if I can just invoke his name without any relationship and think it will work for me. I have news to you, it for you. We just read, it did not. 
So a believer's authority is based in their relationship to God. If I am not a Christian, if I am not a believer, I do not have the spiritual authority. This is one of the many blessings that we, you and I have been blessed with in the heavenly realms. These are one of the many spiritual blessings. This is not money. This is not a car. This is not a house. When the Bible says God who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms, this is one of them. These are one of those spiritual blessings. You and I can walk in spiritual authority so we don't have to take things. Forces of darkness should not have authority and reign over us. We are not oppressed like the world is oppressed. The world, glory to God, they're trying to combat and overcome some things, but they have no power to do so. Thank you, Jesus. We have the power to do so because we have the life-giving power of the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. And I'm getting excited early tonight, 10 minutes into our lesson. We have the life-giving power of the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us. So our authority is based in our relationship to God. So number one tonight, we're still dealing with uh, understanding our authority and dealing with principles in, in, in our spiritual authority. All authority is established by God. Number two, a believer's authority is based in their relationship to God. Number three, principles and authority. These are things for you to remember. Kingdom authority is noticeable and it is attractive. Kingdom authority is noticeable and it is attractive. Luke 4, starting at verse 31. Then he, that is Jesus, went down to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, and on the Sabbath he taught the people. They were amazed at his teaching because his words had authority. In the synagogue there was a man possessed by a demon, an impure spirit. He cried out at the top of his voice, go away. What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet. Jesus says sternly, coming out. First thing we notice, first thing we notice, he says kingdom authority is noticeable. Who noticed it first? The, the kingdom of darkness noticed it first. Go away. What do you want with a Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? They noticed who he was. I know who you are. They noticed who, who Jesus was. Kingdom authority is noticeable. I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus says sternly. So no reason that Jesus said, be quiet. Come on, be quiet. Sternly, be quiet. This is the God that you and I serve. I want you to get that tonight. Do not think he's just some meaty mouth whispering, talking. Jesus answers sternly, be quiet. Come out of him. Then the demon threw the man down before them. All and came out without injuring him. Watch this. All the people were amazed and said to each other, what words these are. With authority and power, he gives orders to impure spirits and they come out. And the news about him spread uh, throughout the surrounding area. So it was noticeable by the demons. Then it was noticeable by the people. Kingdom, real authority, it is noticeable and it is attractive. Because once they said this, this authority, news spread about him around the area. If you want to really be popular, focus on being powerful. Don't focus on being popular, just focus on being powerful. When you are powerful, the word will spread. If you're healing sick, casting out devils, you walking in true kingdom authority, word will spread about you. It's going to spread among people, and it's going to spread among the kingdoms of darkness. As we just read in Acts chapter 19, Paul I know, Jesus I know, the kingdoms of darkness are going to know you, and people are going to know you. And most importantly, God knows you. So word about you will spread. Don't focus on being popular. Just be powerful. Walk in authority. Walk in authority. Walk in true, authentic Christian authority that is based in your relationship to God. And the world will know who you are because authority is noticeable and attractive. 
A believer's authority is no greater than the power that's behind it. And God is the power behind the authority. So if you understand that it's the power of God behind you, you have no problem using it, using it fearlessly. You have no problem using it fearlessly. Thank you, Jesus. Because, because you know that it is God's power behind you. Thank you, Jesus. So let's go on to the next one. Kingdom authority is noticeable and attractive. So we said tonight, authority is established, all authority is established by God. A believer's authority is based in their relationship to God. Kingdom authority is noticeable and it is attractive. Number four for tonight, obedience to authority breeds or gives more authority. Obedience to authority breeds more authority. Acts 13, and let's read verse 22. Acts 13, verse 22. It says, after removing Saul, he, that is God, God made David their king. They're, they're referring to as Israel. God made David Israel's king. Watch. God testified concerning him. I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart. Watch this. He will do everything I want him to do. And since he will do everything I want him to do, God made him king and made him and gave him authority. He placed him over his people. And David was anointed three times. And each time there was a threefold anointed, David was anointed among his brothers. Then David was anointed king of Judah. Then David was anointed king, uh, uh, king over the tribe of Judah. Then he was anointed king over Israel. And you see, each time David was anointed, God would move him to the next phase, to a higher realm of his calling for him, because David was obedient. He says here, he will do everything I want him to do. Obedience to authority, in this case, David and God, breeds more authority. It gave birth to more authority. David was first obedient to Saul until he became king. And when we're obedient in small everyday tasks, God will give us more authority. David was obedient to Saul and he was obedient to God. And so obedience to authority gave him more authority. Let's go to number five tonight. I don't want to keep it too long. Number five, rebellion against authority can bring severe judgment. Rebellion against authority can bring severe judgment. Romans 13, verse 2, again, consequently, whoever rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. Will bring judgment on themselves. Authority on any level, it must be honored and it must be respected. God, we have to have the understanding that God has established authorities. It must be ordered and it must be respected. God has established authorities. And there we have to learn how to balance honoring authority even when they're wrong without slandering authority. And there is a difference. We have to learn how to fight and combat evil. I, I say this because I know we're living in an age where there is, uh, and it's always been this way, it's not new, but uh, we're living in a time now where social justice is at the forefront of our minds, at the forefront of, of, of our news, and it needs to be. These things are important. And what is the right way to rebel against authority? And we see examples of this even in scriptures when an authority is not operating in the right way. And how do we rebel against that authority uh, uh, and yet still honor uh, authority? It's, it's a fine line there. There's a difference. There is a way to speak to an authority and say, I believe this authority is wrong and should change, but I should never curse the authority. I should never slander the authority. I should never wish evil upon the authority. I should pray for the authority. We see a great example of this uh, in the life of Daniel. Daniel was under the reign of an ungodly kings. And you see this throughout the book of Daniel. He was started sentences. Watch this. 
O king, live forever. And he would speak to the king. These are the people who would have his people enslaved, his people in bondage. But he recognized authority. He recognized, watch this, through the writings of Jeremiah that God had ordained this. And we see this in the book of Daniel. Where he says, I re- you'll see this in, in, in one of the chapters that escapes my mind now. He says, I remember, from, he said, I recognize now from the writings of Jeremiah how long we're going to be down here enslaved. So I recognize God has established and ordained this authority for this time period. They're going to be in charge. So in the meantime, let me operate under this authority. And even when I want to bring about change, there is a way to do it because I see that when they make ungodly laws like I shouldn't pray to my God, let me pray anyway. And I forget thrown in the lion's den, I get thrown in the lion's den. When they make an ungodly law, three Hebrew boys, like I shouldn't bow, like that I should bow before an image and they don't bow, gets me thrown in the fiery furnace. So there is a way, we see this in the book of Daniel, there is a way to combat ungodly authorities, watch this, without going against God's principles of authority. We pray for them. We don't slander them. We don't curse them. We don't call them ungodly names. That's how the world acts. That's how the ungodly act. There is a way for us to speak against uh, things that we believe are wrong and that are against the authorities, but do it in a way that still honors God and honors the authority. Glory to God. This is tough, but it's but something I believe we need to hear in the body of Christ. Because rebellion against authority can bring severe judgment. And it's talking about when authority is a godly authority, when that's an authority that's doing things the right way, you just don't rebel against authority because they don't agree with something that you want to do. But there's a way that you honor God and you honor the authority, even when they do wrong. There's a way that you, you handle it. We see another example of this in the life of David and Saul. Where Saul was doing all types of wrong, all types of evil. David ultimately rebelled by running away from Saul. He didn't, God didn't say stay there next to a guy that's throwing spears at you. But he ran away and I'll even allow you to take some of the consecrated bread and the sword of Goliath to run away from this ungodly authority. But watch what David did. David says, oh, I'm going to leave this in the hands of God. And I won't slander him. I won't speak against him. I, I'm even, I'm conscious stricken when I cut off the edge of his robe. So there is a way to do this. Rebellion against authority can bring severe judgment. And then finally, let's get to our last one for tonight. A believer must first recognize, watch this, they're under authority. Not that they're over anyone. A believer first must recognize that they are under authority. They've got to recognize they are under authority. Luke 7, verse 8. We read this before, and I'll read this again. Dealing with the faith of these centurions. For I myself, the centurion says, am a man under authority with soldiers under me. He didn't first mention who he was over. He first talked about who he was under. I'm over at least 100 soldiers, but before I mention anything, let me talk about the authority I'm under. When someone meets you, they need to know who who are you under. I hate to say this. I don't mean to uh, disturb anyone, but I'll pluck a few feathers tonight. Whatever ministry you're doing, are you praying for people on Facebook? At some point, somebody's going to ask, what church do you go to? So who are you under? If you, if you have a ministry on the street where you feed the homeless, people are going to ask, what church do you go to? They're going to need to know, who are you under? Everyone should be under some type of authority. So a believer must recognize they are under authority. We don't talk about, walk around and talk about who we're over. We talk about who we're under. First and foremost, we are under authority of God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit who leads us and guides us in the truth of God's word on a daily basis. Through the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit and the help of God's word, we, he leads us in the truth and we become more Christ-like. We are under God's authority, under the authority of the word. We are under the authority of pastors and spiritual leaders. Who's your pastor? Who's your bishop? Who's your leader? Who's your apostle? Who are you under? A believer must recognize they are under authority. And I'll say this right now. You've heard me say this before for those of you who go to our church, and I'll I'll keep repeating it. 
I am very afraid. I'm a scared. <laughs> I'm a scared or afraid. I'm scared of someone who's operating in ministry who's not involved in a local church. That's very scary to me. Every time I've, I've dealt with someone, it, it's always been a little funny, a little weird. When someone's operating in ministry or uh, whatever it is, and you say, what church they go to? And they say, I'm not in the church right now. Or I'm not in the church right now. I, I'm very wary of that. The first thing I ask when I want to bring somebody in to preach, uh, minister, whatever it is, who, what church are you a part of? Or you're a pastor as well. That's great. Uh, who, who, who uh, if you're just a, a member or an associate minister, who's your pastor? Who, who are you under? Who do you operate with? What denomination or what organization are you with? Something, somebody you're over. What umbrella of ministry do you come under? Are you just out here wandering like a spiritual nomad? Or are you under authority? These things matter. These things are important. And I'm very, it, 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 it's, it's, it, we live in a time where we want to be spiritually wild stallions. Nobody can saddle us. We're out of the pen. We just want to buck and do whatever. But we have to understand all of these things matter in the area of spiritual warfare. Because we have to recognize we're under authority as we learn to grow and walk in the spiritual authority that God has given us. So let's review tonight everything we've gone over in our principles of authority. This continues on. We have so many. It says, uh, we said, first and foremost, all authority is established by God. Romans 13, verse 1. We said a believer's authority is based in their relationship to God. So I can't be out of relationship with God, and I, I have to be a Christian and accept Jesus Christ into my life to walk in this authority. Or else I end up like the seven sons of Sceva, trying to invoke the name of Jesus that someone else preaches about. We said, number three, kingdom authority is noticeable. It is attractive. We said, number four, obedience to authority breeds more authority. Number five, we said, rebellion against godly authority can bring severe judgment. Rebellion against a godly authority can bring severe judgment. We gave examples of how to rebel against authority while still honoring it. We see that in the life of David. We see it in the life of the three Hebrew boys. When, when laws were made against their faith and then against things that they, they thought were wrong, there's a way they rebelled against that authority, but they didn't curse the authority. They didn't speak down about the authority. They didn't call them all type of derogatory names. They didn't uh, make ungodly memes about the authority and make all these ungodly pictures. These are not how we operate. It's how the world operates. Then we said, finally, um, uh, a believer must first recognize they are under authority. We are under authority. Who are you under? That's all I have for you tonight. I'm believing God. You are getting ready to walk in some spiritual authority like never before. Because you won't always have to call me or someone else, call another spiritual leader. But when things break out in your home, you are able to resist the devil. You're going to get the oil out. You're going to pray. You're going to know that word is going to be on the tip of your tongue. And fire of the Holy Spirit is going to come when it comes out of your mouth because you're going to walk in spiritual authority. I speak and I believe it in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll talk with you soon. God bless.